Well, many of you know that one of our family favorite TV shows is the Game of Survivor. Uh, fun fact, Joel's teacher, Bill, actually his sister went to grad school with Jeff Probst, which is where he created this amazing show. Uh, I guess that makes us uh, two, two degrees separated from him, two or three. I'm not really sure how that works, but anyway. Um, but you know, uh, many of you have watched Survivor. It's a, it's a big game. It's a social experiment. Uh, they take people from all walks of life, from all parts of the country, and they put them on this island. And each week, uh, one, one player is voted off of the island. Um, and actually, the tribal members um, vote to, um, to vote them off. Uh, and the goal is to outplay, outwit, and outlast. You want to fight to stay in the game, to be at the end where the twist comes. Instead of being voted off of the island, those that you had a hand in voting off, uh, you want them to vote you the prize of a million dollars. Um, and then there's, the, there's a physical aspect of the game where they need to to find food and make shelter. Uh, there are immunity challenges where uh, they're shielded from the vote, they're protected from the vote, um, uh, they're safe at tribal council. There is also the social game where alliances are formed and ultimately there's all kinds of lying and, and deceiving and slander and blind sides and backstabs and I'm like, why do I let my kids watch this game? But anyway, um, as we um, come to 1 Kings, uh, we see that David's family continues to be like a giant game of Survivor, but the stakes are way higher, right, with David. Um, we've seen that David's passivity as a parent has led to a daughter being raped, uh, murders, usurping the throne, exiles, and um, 1 Kings chapter 1, we see nothing's changed. Um, those closest to David know that Solomon uh, was God's chosen one to be next to the throne. Uh, Solomon had God's immunity idol. He was safe at tribal. Um, however, um, we see uh, one of his half-brothers, uh, Adinojah, I will, I promise, I cannot get this kid's name straight. I am so sorry. I am probably will not pronounce it the same way twice, so please just bear with me, Grace. <laughs> uh, Adinajah um, takes advantage of his father's frailty and his age, and he sets himself up, declaring himself to be king. Um, and um, we get insight into David's parroting. First uh, Kings chapter 1, verse 6 says, um, gives us a little commentary on it. it, says that David never interfered with him by asking him, why do you behave as you do? Um, so we see uh, uh, Nathan and Bathsheba, that's Solomon's mom. Nathan's the prophet, um, Bathsheba's mom. They form an alliance and they decide they're gonna tag team him, tag team David to reveal to David that his other son has taken the throne. And David is forced to act to preserve the throne. He orders Solomon be anointed as king he bows uh, from his bed uh, to transfer, the transferring of the kingship. Um, and, and yet, David, we see David passes away. And, um, and it, once Solomon becomes the king, he still needed to outplay his brother. We know that, that, that Adidoja, he deserved death for what he did, and yet David and Solomon were very merciful to him. They parted, they seemed to have pardoned him. They spared him. His fire had not gone out. He did not get voted out at that point. Um, but Ad Adinajah then goes to Solomon's mother asking for, he asks for uh, one of David's concubines, and uh, I'm not sure if Bathsheba thought it was innocent and that maybe he just inherited the father's lust problem. I'm not sure, really, really sure what she was thinking, but but Solomon saw right through it. He knew for he knew this was a power play. This was another attempt to usurp the throne, um, and so Solomon had to outplay him and uh, basically tell him, uh, "Dinner job. Bring me your torch." The tribe has spoken and his fire is gone. He's out of the game. So, um, you know, you may feel at times that 
um, that that your life is like this huge game of Survivor. I mean, people around you all the time, you know, they're making power plays, they're outmaneuvering us trying to get to the top. Um, you might think, you might find people lying about you, cheating you, maybe you've been taken advantage of by a company you work for or by a company that you're purchasing something from. Maybe you've been lied about at church. Maybe someone, um, uh, maybe you've been kind to someone and they've turned around and they've treated you unfairly. Maybe your child is being bullied at school and the administration's not uh, doing what you think is appropriate to protect your child. We take heart. God's promises to you are certain. We know that God has good plans for you. Uh, Jeremiah 29 11 says for I know the plans God says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future and uh, we love Romans 8 28 which says we know that in all things it's the good the bad and the ugly in all things um, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purposes so no amount of plotting scheming apathy, greed, cheating can overcome God's plan for your life. God has, God, we see in the narrative, God had determined that the throne through David was to go to Solomon. Solomon again had God's immunity idol. He was safe from the vote, but ultimately, you know, and ultimately God was preserving that kingship for, you know, Jesus to be born, which we know is God, God on God's eternal throne. Jesus is God on the eternal throne, right? Um, um, so, so we know that, and, and I don't know if you saw this, and I hope that this struck you as you were studying uh, First Kings uh, chapters 1 to 4 this week, um, a little bit in First Chronicles, a little bit in Second Chronicles. I hope that you were able to see that how loving and gracious God was to David, uh, that it would be through the woman that was the very object of David's sin that 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 God had determined that the throne would would go on through that it was Solomon the the son of Bathsheba uh, would would be the one that God would just really uh, set his affection on and and decide uh, that David's dynasty would go through him and it just really shows that God can redeem all things you know no one's ever too far gone you know God can take any crappy circumstance in our life and make something good. I mean, just kind of reminds me a few years ago, my six-year-old said to me, Mommy, how does God make poop in the garden grow? How does God make use poop in the garden again? So out of the poop of our life, the poopy circumstances in our life, God grows beautiful things. No matter how bad we've sinned or how bad others have sinned against us, uh, God, take heart. Uh, you can be confident that God's plan will come about. He has the wisdom to know what is best for us, and he has the power to make it happen, right? And we see um, Isaiah says that God's ways are not our ways. Like his ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher than ours. You know, God doesn't always act the way we think he should act or the way we would expect him to act, but we can be confident that and rest assured that he will act and he will act for our best and he is our great redeemer so he can redeem all things and will redeem all things in the end for sure so first current uh first kings um three chapters three and four and also if you saw, looked uh, at second chronicles one as well now uh chronicles and kings we're going to kind of be studying them at the same time and um it's a little tricky and I'm not, you know, entirely 100% sure, but when I read both uh, accounts, I kind of get the feeling or I kind of get the thought that that um, that they're they're recounting the same uh, events. However, Kings is kind of is a little bit more historical, less commentary on it. And I kind of feel like Chronicles is uh, has a little bit more of the spiritual aspect is told um, maybe with more of God's covenant in mind and, and from a, more of a priestly perspective, talking a little bit more about spiritual things. So, uh, so it's fun. It's, it's good to read both, to study both. It's good to focus on both. So uh, we see Solomon, uh, he's young, uh, he finds himself, uh, he's inexperienced, he finds himself this uh, being the king of Israel. Um, he, he was the one that God had chosen and we see that he's, he's off to a good start. And he takes the things uh, that his father has said to him at, at heart. You know, David, uh, we saw in First Chronicles chapter 28, we said to, we see David um, say to Solomon, look, obey the Lord. 
follow his commands, follow the law that was given through Moses. Um, do your best to serve the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and Solomon determined to do this. So, so he starts off well, and we see that he's um, actively pursuing God. We see that he goes to the tabernacle. He's offering uh, sacrifices on the altar the way that God had prescribed. And, and, and God then comes to him. And God says to Solomon, ask for whatever you want me to give you. And wow, talk about a blank slate. You know, what would we choose? You know, and, 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 and Solomon, you know, he, he in humility uh, and by faith, he, he asks for wisdom. Um, this is so good for us to see because, you know, God, he is our perfect heavenly father. He's a good father. We see Jesus tells us this in, uh, in Matthew uh, chapter 7, verses uh, 7 to 11. Jesus says that our heavenly father, he wants us to come to us. He wants us to, to go to him and ask for things. He wants us, he wants as a good father, he wants to give us good things. You know, sometimes I feel like, like my kids, I'm like, please, I really want to do what's good for you. Please let me, um, you know, but he doesn't always give us what we think is best, right? Uh, my six-year-old, she does not understand why she cannot eat cookies and ice cream and soda all the time. And of course, my 17-year-old constantly reminds me he didn't even know what soda was until he was eight. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but... Um, you know, we, but, but sometimes, you know, God will withhold what we think is good for us um, because it's not his best for us. And that's okay. We need to be good. We need to be good with that. But, but it's good. It's good to, to, to seek God and approach him like Solomon did uh, with great humility and by faith um, and, and come to our heavenly father, knowing that he wants to give us good things and he wants to give us the desires of our heart. And as we align our heart with God's heart, he will. Um, so, so, um, so God is pleased with Solomon's request for wisdom. And, 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 and God says, you know, that, that and, and it says in scripture that, that God knows the heart. He knows our hearts. He knows our motives. And he knew that Solomon was not asking out of, uh, uh out of any f fleshly desires that he had or or any um, selfish ambition but but he was truly asking because he wanted to lead well he wanted to lead God's people well and and so God said you know because of that because I'm so pleased with you for asking for that you know God grants him riches and and honor and power and fame as well um, and and so we see that um, and 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 we're gonna see you know in the coming weeks that he didn't do it perfectly but you know, he does become, with David, you know, they became the two of the greatest kings of all of Israel, uh, for sure. And I think what made Solomon so great is that I think he really got it. I think he really knew the plan for him. I, I think he really knew that he was a small part in, in God fulfilling his bigger purposes for, the bigger promises that he made for David and the bigger purpose. And I'm sure that you know, David had instructed him that the Messiah was to come through his line and, and what an amazing promise that was for them. What an honor for them. And I think he really got it that the purpose of the king of Israel uh, was not to leave for himself and out of selfishness, but, but he was to, but really God was the one on the throne. God was the true king of Israel. And the king of Israel was like the steward that God, as he aligned with God, that he had to allow God to lead through him, and so I think he really got that, and I think it also he was also um, uh, pleasing to God and 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 made great because I think he he sought spiritual blessings over material, over material blessings. So so he got it, um, and 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 we like like Solomon, like I said before, like we should approach God uh, with humility and by faith, just knowing that He's our a good Father and He wants to give us good things, and we want to please Him with our faith. And, and just remember God's kindness to you and his faithfulness um, and look at the promises that he's made to you. It's such a privilege to see God's promises uh, be fulfilled in you and through you. Um, and he'll do that. He'll do that. So, so God, uh, he's at work in your life. He was at work in Solomon's life and, um, and he's able to. So Solomon, um, he was able to outwit um, because he had the wisdom that 
he had received from God. He had God's wisdom. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the narrative this week. And you, and you saw, you know, you saw how he outwitted uh, Adonai. I see, I'm not going to say it the same way. Uh, he outwitted Joab. He outwitted uh, uh, Shemei. Um, and that was crazy. Actually, Shemei, if you notice, he kind of got himself voted off the island there, right? And, and that's what happens in the game, right? They do something stupid. They're not wise. And they get themselves voted off. Um, and, and we see that, 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 that Solomon's wisdom, we're told by scripture, became world known, world renowned. He became for, his, for the wisdom that he received from God because he allied himself with God and he asked for God's wisdom and God, um, God gave it to him. And, and, and there was one example that they gave um, with the, the baby and the moms and one of the moms had lost her baby and had taken the other one and 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 they came to the king and and the king said okay bring out the sword we're going to split the baby in half and it's like oh. and of course the real mother's like no 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 give it to her give the baby to her and 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 that was a way that that Solomon used his wisdom to reveal who the true mother was it was the one that wanted to spare the child was the true mom he he knew so um and it was that was just one example probably of many things that he did that made him um, it was uh, to make him wise, to make him, make him world famous for his wisdom, but it was really God's wisdom through him. So we need God's wisdom. In Ephesians uh, 1 uh, verse 17 says, so Paul saying this to the church in Ephesus, he's saying, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you to, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and the incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule, all authority, power and dominion, and every title that, being, that can be given not only in this present age, but in the one to come. And God placed all things under Jesus' feet and appointed him to be head over everything. So we need God's wisdom, right? We need him. What does Paul say? Paul says we need God's wisdom first to know him better, right? So as we spend time with God in his word, he reveals himself to us. We understand who he is, who we are in him. We see his love for us. We learn about him, we grow closer to him, we learn to love him more. Um, through We need God's wisdom too, to know the hope to which he's called us to, our spiritual inheritance in heaven, those treasures in heaven, our spiritual home in heaven. Um, God, as we, uh, as we rely on God's wisdom, we learn about him, he opens our eyes to see what awaits us in heaven. And three, um, we need God's wisdom to show us that that power, that resurrection power of God, the Holy Spirit, is alive within us and we need to to lean on God's wisdom to allow the Holy Spirit to empower us to control us um, to guide us uh, to give us what we need to live the kingdom values the kingdom principles God's principles in this world in this crazy upside down world right because and that's all a part of God's plan and how he's fashioning us for eternity he's getting us ready for eternity and we need his wisdom um, to do that and his word is his wisdom to us um, and that and and as we grow in in God's wisdom uh, through time over time uh, he gives us the ability to outwit. Uh, any anyone who sets themselves up against our Lord. Okay, and you also saw, you know, this week how uh, David desired uh, so badly to build a temple for God that, and we saw it in First Chronicles this week that you know David tells Solomon that he wanted to be the one, but God had determined, you know, because David was a warrior and he shed blood that he would not be the man to build the temple, but Solomon would be. So God determined Solomon would be, but God was still so gracious and loving and kind to David in that he gave David um, the plans for building the temple. So it was through the Holy Spirit that God uh, gave the plans, the blueprint for the temple, 
to David that David then passed along to Solomon. And next week on Survivor, we're going to see how uh, the Holy Spirit uh, really empowered David and then empowered Solomon uh, to be able to build the temple. That he that the Holy Spirit empowered the craftsmen, gave them the abilities to do that. Um, and also uh, God provided all the resources, all the time, all the energy. He made it happen. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, when God to know that when God gives a job to do, when God gives a task, he will give you everything that you need to complete that task uh, to the end. Um, so we know that. And God, um, we're going to see that more next week. But God had commissioned David and, and Solomon actually built the physical temple. And that would be the place, like just like the tabernacle that was mobile, this is going to be a physical dwelling that was not mobile, you know, built with stone and, and to be sent, uh, stationed. Um, and that would be where God would be sent to reside. And that, that's where God was to be worshipped. Um, and we know that until Jesus came, right, until his life and death and resurrection and his teachings, right, because we know that, we, you know, when Jesus came, um, you know, he said, you know, the temple was okay and everything for that time, but the temple was really just a physical reality, a physical showing to us of a spiritual reality, a greater spiritual reality. So Jesus was like, yeah, the temple's okay, but God is doing something greater. He's building a temple in heaven and he's using us. Um, and so scripture is very clear that each believer, everybody that comes to faith in Jesus is one stone in God's huge heavenly uh, temple. And that also, uh, and also in another way, another type of temple uh, is referred to is our bodies, that we who uh, are, are true believers, who have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, God himself residing in us, we uh, also individually are a type of temple, right? A dwelling of, of, of God. God lives within us. So, so we are, we are, so the saints of all time, uh, both individually and collectively, like we are, uh, uh, God's, uh, part of God's temple, the kingdom that God is building and the way he, we all work together. Um, the way his kingdom is built is that we see others come to faith and we build them up in their faith and that's that's the work that God has for us and it's hard and where Satan is, where God is at work we know Satan is opposing so it's going to be hard work we are going to be opposed but we who are faithful who have our hearts set on loving God and serving God with our whole heart soul mind and strength um, we will be opposed we will be attacked by Satan and all who set themselves up against God and it may feel like this game it's like a huge this life is like a huge game of survivor, right? With everybody trying to outplay us, outwit us, outlast us, right? But keep pressing on. David encouraged Solomon with these words from 1 Chronicles 28. He said to his son, be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple is finished. Well, we know that God has work for us too, right? Um, and we press on, we need to press on. And like we said last week, the battle rages on, the battle's fierce, we know, but it is the Lord's and he, he goes before you, he fights for you, right? And God has given us everything we need to stand in the battle, right? We need to every day, uh, to, uh, every, he, we, God's given us everything we need to outlast, if you will. Um, and each day we should be putting on the full armor of Christ, like Ephesians 6 says. And, and I, I didn't really go into it in de detail last week. I wanted to, but just briefly, you know, he gives us the helmet of salvation. And there's a reason it's the helmet. Like we have to be assured. We have to be confident. We have to know about our salvation, that we are saved. And, and, and it's the, in the mind, right? The battle is in the mind. That's where it is. That's where Satan's going to try to lie to you and deceive you. Um, the world lies to you. And we need to take uh, captive every thought. And we need to compare everything that we're thinking uh, to the word of God. See if it's really God's truth, right? Um, and he put, we're to put on the breastplate of righteousness, right? You, if you are in Christ, you are declared righteous. The blood of Jesus covers you. That means that Jesus' perfect life when he walked on this earth gets put on you so that God sees uh, Jesus's righteousness on you. Um, we need to take up the shield of faith, right? 
Um, we need to put our faith in the Word of God, right? Um, we need to be um, wielding the sword of the Spirit, right? That's being filled with the Holy Spirit every day, throughout the day. We need to be confessing our sins and asking the Holy Spirit to empower us and take control and guide us and give us the words to say and the, the energy to do the work that God calls us to do, right? Um, and the belt of truth. The belt is what holds all the armor together. The truth is the Word of God, you know? So, so we need to be um, putting uh, our faith in the Word of God right? And the wisdom, the wisdom of God. And we need those feet fitted with the readiness of sharing the gospel. So we need to be ready wherever God sends us, um, whatever, wherever God sends it. It might be the post office. It might be the grocery store. It might be the bagger at the grocery store. You never know where God is going to send you to, 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 uh, to be uh, bringing the words of grace and peace to someone who is so needy and need and need and need and, and, and needs hope. Uh, hope and healing and wholeness. That's what it's about, right? So, so, um, so God, uh, we are to go being filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation, right? So we can outplay, outwit, and outlast. Um, those words that David gave to Solomon are true of us. Uh, be strong, be courageous, do the work, do not, do not uh, be afraid or discouraged for the Lord is with you. Uh, and he will not fail you. He will not forsake you until all the work is done. Uh, and there is work to do. So uh, press on, uh, outplay, outwit, outlast. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. You're, you still have fire in the game. So go in his grace. Amen.